during my investigation, I'm like, you know what? I need to talk to somebody at the highest levels, right? So, and this will give you an idea of the kind of people we talk to. And this is the only one I'm going to talk about using their name because they died two years ago. So in spring 2021, I actually flew with a couple colleagues of mine to Las Vegas. And I met with Senator Harry Reid about nine months before he died. And of course, he's a private citizen now. And I wanted to brief him on the topic. And I wanted to get his kind of thought leadership on it because, you know, he was a Gang of Eight member, right? You know, which is the top most cleared senators and congressmen. He was the majority leader, for God's sakes, of the Senate. And I knew, you know, he helped sponsor the OSAP program that I mentioned and you know, where they looked at Skinwalker Ranch and some other things. And I wanted to understand, like, what does Harry Reid actually know? Like, why did he you know, give $21 million to DIA and Bigelow Aerospace for this. So I'm sitting there in Harry Reid's living room, you know, right next to him with some other witnesses that were there with me. And he straight up says, he's like, yeah, I knew we had UFO material. I was denied access for decades. I tried to get access. And then he explained some of his efforts during OSAP. Uh, and I was like, Holy shit. Did the, the former majority leader just say that he just confirmed this to me as well. You know, I was already talking to these amazing high level people, but I have Harry Reid literally saying, yes, we have material. And, you know, he knew it was non-human. Did Harry Reid have personal experience with this? I don't know if he's had any personal stuff in his personal life. I mean, did he see it? Did he? Did he, he said. Witness? In terms of seeing the material himself, he said he was denied access for years, or decades was his term. And he actually told me on behalf of me, he was going – so he had like a weekly call with President Joe Biden at the time. And he straight up said to me he was going to talk to President Biden about this issue, literally. And then uh, what he was telling me about OSAP um, – I was like, holy shit, I have like 20 other people that told me this, dude. So the real history, what fucking OSAP was, because I think there's a lot of people out there that think they were looking at ghosts, Skinwalker Ranch. Yes, they went to the ranch as a secondary and tertiary objective. But the real uh, reason, so like there's a document that came out a couple years ago through FOIA from the Defense Intelligence Agency. There was this special access program requests that Harry Reid, you might have seen this, I think like George Knapp and company have reported on this, that he sent to the Deputy Secretary of Defense, William Lynn. And it was asking for one of the most serious saps you can ask for, what they call a bigoted, waived special access program. So waived means it's limited congressional reporting. Um, that is a class of special access programs. And bigoted means it's like by name. And it's like, it was like, uh, you can read the FOIA document. It was like, you know, Harry Reid, James Inhofe, uh, Lou Elizondo, et cetera. And I'm like, why are you asking for the most serious sap to be created for a program that ostensibly is looking at Skinwalker Ranch and stuff? And it doesn't make any sense. So what really happened there and, uh, you know, Harry, mean, Harry Reid, God bless his soul, made this disclosure um, a couple weeks after we met uh, in the New Yorker, and you can look this up, I think it was like a May 2021 New Yorker story where he says, I knew for decades, and he made this disclosure, not me, so I'm going to say the name of the contractor. Harry Reid said this. Uh, you know, we knew that Lockheed Martin had this material for decades. I tried to get access, and I was denied. And specifically with the Lockheed Martin stuff, he was talking about during the OSAP program. And for the people who are on this program, I submitted this shit to Dobser, got this cleared, so don't freak out, but I'm telling the truth here. Um, so Lockheed Martin wanted to divest itself from this material at a specific facility that's known to me that I provided to the inspector general, um, like street address, all that shit, right? And the idea was if they made a catcher's mitt, a security catcher's mitt for this shit, at, you know, most serious sap possible the contractor and the other government customer, which was the Central Intelligence Agency, um, for that specific Lockheed material, and it was shit that they recovered from like the 50s and stuff, and it was like bits and pieces of, 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 of like hall structure, shit like that. 
And um, uh, so they were going to tech transfer it. And the 21 or $22 million was actually for Bigelow Aerospace to build out, you know, facilities in Las Vegas and material analysis equipment. And I've seen, I have, I saw the staff meeting slides. I saw the paperwork, like there's a paperwork trail I've seen on this shit. And I talked to the people involved in this program and, you know, even Jim Lekatsky who ran the program, uh, who's a retired DIA officer, PhD in engineering, even made this disclosure in his book, Skinwalkers at the Pentagon, uh, page 152 to 153. And he also made a disclosure a couple weeks ago, I think it was on Weaponized Podcast with Jeremy Corbell and George Knapp, where he's like, yeah, we had a whole craft and we broke into the hall and we gained access. And he ran that through the same you know, security process as I did. And so Jim Lekatsky, who ran this program, is also going on the record that he is aware, uh, personally aware of intact vehicles and everything, but uh, long- so they gained yeah. access. Mm-hmm. What does that mean, and by what method yeah, did they gain access? The way he wrote it in his book, I can only infer it sounded forci- forcible. So through some kind of, you know, means I don't know if it was like CO two laser or something. I don't actually know how they gained access, but imagine it was uh, not permissive access. They like broke into the damn thing. So this thing yeah. is essentially uh, sealed. And it's yeah. some sort of a, what was the shape of this thing? Uh, he, the Katsky didn't disclose the shape on this particular vehicle. It is, as far as I re- What recollect. about the dimensions? I don't believe he did in his book. Uh, but I think it's like chapter 11 in his new book or something. I glanced at it. But he did make that disclosure on video as well. And I do encourage both the Aero Office, which is the DOD's UAP task force successor, and Congress to ask Dr. James Lekatsky to come in for classified testimony because the disclosure in his one book that he wrote with Colin Kelleher, George Knapp, and in the second book, well, the guy saying he has close personal knowledge, he needs to go to Congress. So I, you know, I don't know James Lekatsky, but I do encourage him to be a fact witness 